So, no, I, I wouldn't say I have a passion for HR. Welcome back to Human Resources for the People. It's a human capital revolution. October 1st, 2023, I reviewed the new California minimum wage law that was coming out. And I asked the question, why were bakeries exempt from the law? It was a very strange line in the law. Here you can see it, Assembly Bill 1228. Uh, and it's a pretty expansive law. Uh, it created uh, the... Uh, fast food council uh, prescribed the council's purposes uh, it created a labor commissioner to enforce compliance etc etc it was pretty substantial in, in addition it created more mandates more statewide concerns etc but in part 4.5.5 fast food it had this here it had fast food restaurant means a limited service restaurant part of a national fast food chain but it doesn't include an establishment that on september 15th 2023 operates a bakery and why on september 15th 2023 i mean why not later what what if uh, before i mean like what, what if after you establish a bakery why couldn't it be part of it very strange uh and it only applied when the establishment produced for sale bread and i asked these questions back on my last video on october 1st now it's come to light that Greg Flynn, who's a fast food billionaire and has donated a quarter of a million dollars to Gavin Newsom's various campaigns and recall fights, might have played a role in it. Bloomberg News reported a couple days ago that it was in connected to Panera Bread franchisee Greg Flynn, who's a billionaire he owns and his properties own 2,600 restaurants and fitness centers across 44 states. Um, and he had opposed it. In 2022, he wrote an op-ed in Capital Weekly saying that it would kill the franchise business model in the state. I, you know, he, since then, he's said he didn't play any role in crafting the exemption, but this brings to mind an old quote from P.J. O'Rourke, a famous libertarian commentator that uh, recently passed away. He said, the first thing to be bought and sold when buying and selling are controlled by legislation our legislators that was in parliament of horrors 1991 and that's exactly right that's what you might be seeing here uh, and so you know again I, I commented at the time that it was very weird and always spoke to you know some sort of uh, special interest being involved in the bill and really undermine the context of the bill right the idea is to in theory at least to give a living wage to people who work in fast food so why does it matter if they're making bread uh, you know, and making actual physical eating bread. And I, I think that that is, you know, an absolute interesting insight into what is going on with labor politics in California. Assembly member James Gallagher, who's the Republican leader, said that uh, the attorney general is responsible for investigating conflicts and they should look into the matter. Uh, this exemption, there's no explanation for it. Someone had to push for it. And that's exactly right. I mean, the Newsom's office tried to refute it, but it came up a little bit flat. Let's take a look at what they said. Newsom's office called the allegations absurd and said that the company is not exempt from the law, but their actual response was a little bit absurd itself. Um, so they said, quote, our legal team has reviewed and it appears Panera is not exempt from the law, except Panera does bake bread in, in Panera. Uh, so I don't, I, I don't know where that, the, the legal team did not give an actual explanation as to why it's not exempt. Uh, they do say Alex Stack, who's a spokesperson said that the governor never met with Flynn about this bill. And this story is absurd. I, I don't know that the story alleges that they actually met about the bill, um, you know, there's, or the governor actually met him. Uh, you know, I think that that is uh, red herring as far as I can tell. Newsom's office said it was a result of countless hours of negotiations with m small businesses and other stakeholders. And Newsom administration officials met with dozens of business owners as well as union representatives. And ultimately, this is one of the things where it, it, having multiple uh, meetings with business owners is actually maybe part of the problem right uh you know these fast food chains because they're being held at the same standard the same high standard are able to beat out uh smaller chains mom and pop shops and ultimately they can absorb a lot of this cost 
Uh, and more importantly, they can steal good employees away from them if if they're part of this chain and 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 the mom and pops cannot afford it. I, I will question it, right? I, I think I'm not sure about this claim. Uh, Flynn Holdings has very few Panera breads, right? So they have 133 compared to 444 Applebee's or 280 Taco Bells. So, I mean, this seems like a very small por portion of Greg Flynn's holdings. And I really, I don't imagine that he played a huge role in this discussion because this, I mean, that, that is a very small uh, group of his overall holdings, but it's still interesting. And, and we are seeing these legislators being bought and sold. Let me know what you think about this in the comments down below. Do you think that this exemption was because of business interests or was this uh, true and honest that bakery uh, bakeries just, they shouldn't be, um, they shouldn't be held to a minimum, a, a quote unquote living minimum wage. Like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye, guys.